Well, our next guest remains one of the most respected venture capital investors in China with six portfolio companies acquired in 2016 alone. They include HR provider China Talent Group, game publisher Gamepedia, and U51. That's a consumer credit rating shop. Let's discuss the investment opportunities in this big space with Jenny Lee, managing partner at GGV Capital. And also joining our conversation from San Francisco is Bloomberg Technology reporter Selena Wang. So, Jenny, I want to ask you first, uh, GGV's investment in Xiaomi, you, you led that, and it could be introducing its smartphones to the U.S. as early as this year. I want to get your take on what you think of this move here. Yeah, Xiaomi phone roadmap actually has been progressing quite a bit over the years. Uh, and I actually use a Xiaomi phone myself, the mm -hmm. latest. I think the product is competitive. Uh, it's up there in terms of performance and very comparable in terms of price. So I do feel that they have a very good chance of penetrating and adopting ad uh, new users uh, in the U.S. market. But Jenny, how does Xiaomi avoid the fate of Huawei in terms of the deal that it had with AT&T that fell through here in the U.S.? Yeah, so I, I do feel that there are different carriers that they can work with. Um, and so it is an ongoing process to find the right partners in all the different countries that they need to lend the phone. And now uh, shifting gears to the Committee on Foreign Investments in the U.S., which we've seen really tighten the types of deals that they will accept, accept from China. So how are you seeing that impact the investment landscape, especially in sensitive areas like artificial intelligence and drones? Yeah, um, so this is an area that's highly scrutinized um, by, you know, regulators on both sides, by investors on both sides, by companies as well on both sides. In particular, areas like in the semiconductor technology areas, areas where it involves payment, and we do believe that areas like cybersecurity, uh, AI, where you're dealing with huge processing of data, and many times personalized data, uh, in specific uh, use case scenarios will be highly scrutinized. Um, so I, I think there will be a lot of attention here. I also think that individually companies will be thinking about, you know, how they can and they are already investing in long-term R&D to build up their own in-house capability domestically. While acquisition or mergers, you know, of global companies can help to, you know, shorten the R&D timeline, I do feel that it's, it's almost a wake-up call for companies to say, hey, you know, that path may be limited going forward and that it's very crucial, especially in the new AI area, to start investing in talent and in core R&D in their home markets. Yeah, we also heard from the president, or at least, you know, talking about these trade tariffs. We've heard some reports that perhaps they could actually curbing some Chinese imports and even some Chinese takeovers as well. Is there any indication that perhaps this hardline stance could go beyond just national security considerations when it comes to M&A from China, Jenny? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's an interesting and, again, highly watched uh, sector. Um, I think, you know, net-net, both China and U.S. needs each other. Uh, it's not going to be a one-way trade. Many of U.S. companies actually has over 50 percent of their sales generated, you know, from their products uh, in China. So I think we would like to see more collaboration, less one-sided policies. Um, and I think that, you know, if there's more collaboration across both markets, whether it's with regards to talent, market, um, and, you know, capital flow, that both countries will actually do better overall. Now, Jenny, in China, there's an enormous online user base as well as tons of data. So are these advantages eventually going to push China ahead of the U.S. when it comes to AI, especially given that China has such strong state support for this tech sector? Yeah, I'm a strong believer in, you know, the AI trend, also a strong believer in how China over the last 10 years has moved very fast up the innovation scale. And definitely, yes, one of the fundamentals around AI, whether it's computer vision, whether it's natural language processing, hinges on um, you know, the, the availability of database within that uh, scenario. Because of the huge number of users, particularly around mobile users and mobile user data uh, in China, many of Chinese startups actually have a head start in terms of accumulating you know, that number of years of tetrabytes of data. Uh, and so they do have an advantage in terms of shaping the product, 
based on the database that they have. Um, I think U.S. has similar advantage as well, but you know, from a sheer number and database perspective, I, I would believe that you know, China uh, is very capable to do a lot of the processing and then coming up with new products within the AI area uh, very soon as well. And so are you seeing more top tech talent in artificial intelligence stay in China versus coming to the U.S. for opportunities? Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I see a lot of these companies every day, and they are different types of talent from software processing around computer vision, natural language processing, data processing. And now we're starting to see talent in the semiconductor space as well. And so not only are talents choosing to stay in China, I think China, whether it's regulation policies, is also encouraging overseas Chinese to come back to China to set up new startups. Um, they are supported with, you know, coming home subsidies uh, and support. So, so you know, it's staying in, uh, and I think more will be coming back to China over the years as well. And lastly, it's International Women's Day, and here in Silicon Valley, there's been a wave of revelations of gender discrimination and sexual harassment over the last year. So I want to get your take on how would you compare the culture in Silicon Valley to the tech community in China? Uh, yeah, I get asked this quite a bit, uh, and I think it's a special day. It's a special day that goes out to all the women. Um, happy Women's Day as well. Um, I think that in China, the technology scene has been pretty supportive of women entrepreneurs, women investors. If you look across from a kind of investor pool perspective as well, um, there's a higher percentage of women in the venture capital business from investment from, you know, um, initial ranks like analyst associate all the way up to a uh, partner level. So, you know, it's in the 10, 15 percent um, uh, relative, uh, I would say double the, the number of uh, women uh, leaders uh, in the venture capital world compared to the U.S. On the entrepreneurship side perspective, uh, perspective, we see a lot of startups in China that's not just hardcore tech, but entrepreneurs trying to innovate in the areas of, say, education, uh, education with AI technology. And in those areas, we, we actually see a higher percentage, sometimes over 50% of the entrepreneurs and CEOs there are led by women entrepreneurs as well. In the areas of commerce, where it's about you know, making sure that the app is geared towards the right women demographic, we also see a right. lot more women uh, founders within the, the founding rank. So it's been a pretty supportive uh, industry here. Perhaps, you know, from a cultural perspective, women has always been the center force of the family unit. Um, and, you know, that, that probably helps uh, to roll off into the enterprise side as well. <laughs>